Problems with sleep can inhibit a person's ability to perform at peak levels during the day. Reporter Laura Windsor has more. If you're having trouble falling or staying asleep, you're not alone. Insomnia affects 30 to 40 percent of the general population. We found out from Dr. Stuart Mann at Desert Regional Medical Center that insomnia can range in severity and has three separate classifications. Insomnia is the most common sleep complaint in, in the world. Insomnia is the, one of the following complaints. Uh, doc, I have trouble falling asleep, or I have trouble staying asleep once I fall asleep, or I wake up too early in the morning, or when at the end of the night, when it's all said and done, I feel like I've, I've had a non-restorative sleep. I don't feel any better than I did when I first went to bed. That insomnia impacts many, many conditions, cardiovascular conditions, uh, it, it impacts uh, your ability to handle pain. It impacts whether you, uh, you are going to be able to handle your depression or not. So we now think it is very important that it gets treated. People with insomnia that are left untreated have a terrible, terrible outcome in many other areas of their life. Now, the, up until recently, the most conventional way of handling the insomnia was pharmacologic. And there are a variety of pharmacologic agents uh, which are much, much safer and much more effective than the old agents, the barbiturates and the bromides and the uh, placidils of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. But even with these agents, we find that a large number of these people eventually uh, become accommodated to them in other words, the agents stop working. They don't get addicted to the agents, that's the mistake, but they, it just no longer works. So more and more what we've been doing with our insomnia patients has been uh, going ahead and using what we call cognitive behavioral therapy, or you'll often see it abbreviated as CPT. In cognitive behavioral therapy, we actually can train people to rethink the way they're approaching their insomnia. I can tell you one of the most classical mistakes that people make when they have insomnia. They get into bed way too early, thinking that by getting into bed early, they'll give themselves more chance to fall asleep. And it's been shown that the longer you stay in bed awake, the worse your insomnia would get. So it's better to restrict it. And one of the more challenging and interesting new therapies is called sleep restriction. By restricting the amount of time in bed, you actually can improve somebody's sleep. We used to think that most insomnia has a psychological or, or a, a psychiatric basis to it, but we really now believe only about 40% have that, and about 60% of the time it's due to some other issues like medical conditions itself that can cause the insomnia. So there's no doubt about it that anxiety and depression can whip an insomnia and make it even worse, but we now know that insomnia untreated can make anxiety and depression worse. If this has been going on, say, for continuously for three months, at least four nights out of the week, and there isn't a clear reason why you know it's happening, so now we've gone from transitional or situational insomnia to chronic insomnia. So anything that's lasting more than three months, more than four nights a week, pretty continuously, deserves to be uh, treated. And the earlier you treat it, probably the earlier you come to attention, probably the easier it's going to be to treat because you haven't, you haven't began to manifest the bad habits that insomniacs get into. It's important to treat insomnia before it becomes an unhealthy sleep pattern and not getting the right amount of sleep can affect every aspect of your life. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.